Some time ago, I made a What's in my Art Supply Set video where I showed the contents of this case and explained my reasons for including everything that's in it. That video seems to have been well received, so I decided to make another video where I show you some of the other pen cases and art supply kits that I use frequently. A lot of the materials I'm going to show you I've already discussed, so this is mostly going to be an excursion into the different pen cases and portable kit configurations that I enjoy using. The contents of this case were arrived at through many years of trial and error, and to this day, it's still what I take with me almost every time I want to make art outside of my studio. I say almost because there are situations where I just don't need this much stuff, either because I don't have time to do anything elaborate, or I'm working on something that calls for limited supplies, or simply I'm in a place where it's not convenient or appropriate to take a full kit. While those situations call for something more compact, I never want to feel like I'm sacrificing functionality for compactness. I feel like in many portable kits, the art supplies are miniaturized to the point where they're just not comfortable to use. Tiny water brushes with very little water capacity, pocket palettes with barely any mixing area, tiny pencils you can barely hold, etc. No offense to those that use those type of kits and enjoy them, but they just feel like toys to me. So here is my perfect compact kit. This is the SmartFit case made by Lihid Lab, and it's 3.3 inches wide, about 6.5 inches long, and 1.5 inches deep. The perfect size to fit even your oversized fountain pens. And the best thing about it, and why I chose it really, is because it perfectly fits this watercolor set. This is a 16 half pound watercolor tin that measures two and a half inches by four inches, and the brand is called Whiskey Painters, which is a strange brand, I know. But the tin itself is made by an Italian manufacturer that also makes tins for a number of other high-end brands. I've used smaller watercolor tins in the past, such as this one, and have come to the conclusion that this is about as small as I'm willing to go. Not only because I like having a full range of colors with me, which is really nice, but I find that smaller sets have an insufficient mixing area. That's really the main problem with all those tiny portable palettes. You can do good work with very limited palettes of four colors, five colors, but with these you can't dilute your paint properly and having to constantly clean the mixing area gets really annoying. While I'm not willing to make sacrifices for the sake of compactness when it comes to my watercolor sets, sacrifices do have to be made. There's not enough space for a collapsible water cup here or for water, though you can just easily carry them separately. But since I only use this case in situations where time is very limited, I only bring along my two Pentel water brushes, the medium and the large. As much as I prefer the greater control of regular brushes, for quick pen and ink sketches in smaller sketchbooks, these work perfectly fine. The most painful sacrifice is, of course, not being able to bring my full arsenal of pens. Since in this case I can only choose one or two, I decided to go with pens that produce the largest variety of strokes possible, a pen with a Fude nib and a pen with a Flex nib. These are both Twisby 580s, and this one has a Fude customization by a Spanish company, FP Nibs. Fude nibs have some advantages over flex nibs when sketching. While flex pens can also produce a large variety of lines, I find that in order for them to work really well, a flex pen has to write quite wet, which creates pools of ink in the thick strokes that take a long time to dry. The Fude nib, however, spreads the ink in a thin layer across the paper, even in the super thick strokes, and works much better for quick sketches where you don't have the luxury of waiting for the ink to dry. But since I also really love flex pens, this 580 has a number 5.5 Ultra Flex nib from Fountain Pen Revolution. Both pens are usually filled with Noodler's Black, which I've come to prefer over Platinum Carbon Black because this ink is slightly more transparent, giving my sketches a softer, less graphic look. Here I have a Rotring Rapid Pro 2mm clutch pencil, which has great weight, very sturdy construction, and also has the benefit of having a built-in sharpener, something that the more expensive Rotring 800 doesn't have. In this little pocket, I usually keep my erasers. And then on this side, I've got some really heavy duty paper towels, which are crucial for cleaning and controlling the water brush. And that's it. Now, I haven't had this case very long, so I can't really speak to its durability, but my older Lihid Lab case, this one, 
has seen very heavy use and abuse for close to three years. And other than a little bit of fraying in the elastic band here, it's held up perfectly well with no issues with the zippers and almost no sign of wear and tear to the outside. I imagine that the same solid build quality extends to all Lihid Lab products, so I have high hopes for this case, and it also cost me $10. Now the issue with both these cases is that the materials inside are tightly packed together with the pens rubbing against each other and the metal tin pressed on top. As a result, I'm hesitant to put my nicer pens in either one of these sets. So what do I do when I really feel like carrying nicer pens? Well, for that situation, I use this case. This is made by Lockby and it's called the Quattro. This case is about the same size as the one made by Lihid Lab. But inside, there are four protective pockets which keep your nice pens from jiggling around and getting scratched. This limits the amount and variety of stuff you can put inside, but sacrifices have to be made for the extra protection. The good thing is that the pockets are pretty big, so they can accommodate even oversized pens such as this Jumbo Opus 88 Omar demonstrator. And because the pockets are staggered, when you close it, it still has a relatively thin profile. The materials and construction of this case are quite nice, with a rugged waxed canvas on the outside and a tough looking material on the inside. Everything looks very solidly reinforced, so I'm looking forward to using this thing for many years to come. The pens in this case change day to day, but for the moment I have a Pilot Falcon and a Pilot Custom 912 FA. These are two fantastic reliable pens that work very well together. I also always carry a mechanical pencil, such as this Rotring Rapid Pro 2mm clutch, since I like to sketch things out before doing my inking. Sadly, the watercolor set is gone, but I've retained a few water brushes to add washes to my pen and ink sketches. This is done by taking ink directly from the nib, like so. Though the inside has limited space, it has two pockets on the outside, which allows me to carry a few extra pieces of important gear. A paper towel on this side, which again is crucial to working with a water brush, and on this side, an eraser. Let's see if I can take it out. Here it is. And then when I'm using my pilot pens, a few extra cartridges because the incapacity of the pilot pens is not great. This is a nice practical compact set that allows you to carry your nicer pens without problems and also provides enough versatility to do different kinds of work. I'm not always so practical when it comes to my materials and the cases I carry them in, however. After all, I'm an artist and have my fair share of romantic foibles. Case in point, here are two cases that perhaps aren't super practical, but I use them anyway because they make me happy. They're made by a German company called Sonnenletter. This larger one is 7.5 inches by 2 and 3 quarter inches, and inside has five pen slots and a little loop at the bottom for an eraser or a pencil sharpener. It's made of very nice leather and is very well crafted with lovely attention to detail. This case is the more or less permanent home of these two pens. This is the Pilot Custom 74 SF Soft Fine and the excellent Pilot Custom 743 FA. These two pens really complement each other and not just visually with the Custom 74 putting down a very fine line with a touch of flex and the 743 FA putting down a line that's closer to medium fine and having much more flexibility. This case is also the permanent home of these two Rotring 800s which are really nice. Again, very substantial with an all brass construction. This one is a two millimeter clutch. And this one is a 0.5 millimeter. In this loop, I usually carry a little nylon eraser since neither one of these pencils has an eraser that's particularly functional. This one being too small and non-existent on this pencil. On the opposite side, there's a little sleeve that probably serves no other purpose than to carry a few business cards. But I found a foldable metal ruler made by Midori to fit inside it. I use this case when doing sketches for my graphic novel projects, and this ruler is great for measuring out the layouts of my pages. The case doesn't carry a lot of supplies, and it's not particularly compact, but I love the look of it, and the fact that the materials are limited keeps me on task. The next Sonnen letter case is more compact measuring 6 inches by 2 inches, and having 3 slots for pens inside. This case holds my lovely Pilot Custom A23, extra fine, and this very pretty yet well-performing 2mm clutch pencil made by Kaweco. 
Like the Rotring 800 2mm clutch, it features an all-metal construction, has a very satisfying and precise lead advancing mechanism, and even though it lacks the knurling of the Rotrings, it's not slippery and still comfortable to use. In the sleeve on the opposite end is something a little bit silly, a really short brass ruler. I would love to find a foldable ruler to replace it, since this one is a little bit too short for most uses, being only a little bit over 5 inches, but I haven't found one so far that fits. However, since I use this case almost exclusively for writing and the occasional margin doodle, the functionality of this ruler is not important, and it looks so darn pretty. These cases are not nearly as practical as the ones made by Lihit Lab or Lockby, but I adore them because they enhance the beauty of the drawing instruments inside, inspiring me to do my best work. I've always been jealous of musicians that have the privilege of using gorgeous, often historically significant instruments. I guess this is as close as I can get to what must be an incredible feeling. But enough frivolity. Let's get back to the nuts and bolts and talk about what I do when I go on long trips and need to carry a lot of stuff. I'm fortunate enough to travel overseas several times a year, sometimes for several months at a time. In such situations, I resort to this case, which allows me to do a huge variety of different kinds of work without worrying that I'll run out of supplies. This is the very inexpensive, well-designed and sturdy case made by BUBM. Originally designed as a cable organizer, it's absolutely brilliant as an art supply case. It measures 9.5 by 7.5 inches and has two compartments with lots of little pockets and elastic loops. I've already talked about many of the supplies in this case in other videos, so I'll review them quickly, but there are a few additional pieces of kit that I haven't yet talked about that I only carry on long trips that I'll discuss in greater detail. Let's open this compartment. and start with this pocket. This is where I carry my 24 half pound watercolor set. This one is made by Medin and is very similar in build and construction to a much more expensive tin made by the Italian manufacturer Falme. I used to use this cheaper tin for years before upgrading. And I'm really glad I did. This case is much sturdier, there are no sharp corners to scratch yourself with, like there is here, and the mixing areas, this is really important, fold out flat, as opposed to this one, which flops around. Also, the palette surface here is enamel, whereas the plastic coating on the cheaper case makes the washes beat up. Also, this more expensive case is a touch wider, which adds additional space for mixing. And though this hogs up a touch more space in the case, it adds storage area for additional brushes in the center, making up for it. Also in this pocket, I load up on my watercolor brushes. Let's take a look at them. This case is long enough that the brushes fit perfectly and there's enough space to even take a larger mop brush like this one, which gives me the ability to handle slightly larger paper sizes. I also include a smaller mop that comes to a point, giving me a little bit more control, and then a bunch of rounds in different sizes. In the same pocket go my collapsible cup and also my trusty clear plastic ruler which I cut out from a larger ruler that was 24 inches. On this side I keep a few tubes of watercolor. Not all of them, just the colors that I tend to go through quickly. When you're doing a lot of landscape sketching, the earth tones, your yellow ochre, your burnt sienna, your venetian red, and your burnt umber will be the first to go. And since there's often a lot of blue and green in the landscape, having extra tubes of ultramarine blue and your most commonly used green, in my case it's sap green, is also a good idea. With the other colors, particularly the bright prismatic colors such as your cad yellows, your cad reds, alizarin crimsons, the risk of running out is small since I tend to use them sparingly. Furthermore, such colors are usually quite concentrated so I don't need a lot to get the color mixture that I want. In this pocket, I usually stuff as many of these durable blue paper towels as I can. I usually run out of these on long trips and they seem to be hard to find outside of the US. So I sometimes have to resort to washing and reusing them. So do yourself a favor and grab more of these paper towels than you think you're going to need. In this second compartment, I carry a large arsenal of pens. Here's my array of Twisby Ecos. 
In my previous video, I've already explained why I like Twisby Eco so much, so I won't go into detail, but these three are in extra fine, medium, and broad. This one has a custom-made Fude nib from, again, FP Nibs. And this one is filled with white ink made by D. Atramentis. This is a medium. Here I have my two Rotring Rapid Pros. This one is a 0.5 millimeter, and this one you've seen before, this is my two millimeter clutch. And then this little spot is reserved for fun stuff. Pens that I'm trying out, pens that I'll miss being so long away from home, or maybe even a nicer pen, though nothing too nice that you would be afraid to scratch or lose. So this part constantly changes, but it's an important part of the kit. I'm a restless spirit when it comes to pens. I'm constantly tinkering, changing out nibs, trying new pens, new techniques, etc. That's something that I really miss doing on the road. So I try, try to take a little bit of that with me. This one, for instance, is a new acquisition, a Narwhal Special Edition with a really interesting, super smooth medium nib that I plan on reviewing at home at some point and really need to test out. This one is an Opus 88 demonstrator with a Pilot Parallel nib with what is called a ruling pen modification that I'd like to do more landscape drawing with. Then I have this Pen BBS 456, which has a really interesting, what's called a Waverly nib, a nib that's slightly tipped up that I'm curious to try sketching outdoors with. And then this Noodler's Triple Tail. Again, part of the case is always, this part of the case is always shifting, so this is what I would probably take with me right now. But since I don't have any travel plans until the Christmas holidays, this selection might change entirely by December. It might seem like I'm taking too much stuff, especially when it comes to pens. And it's important not to overpack and to think carefully and unsentimentally about what you want to take. But this case has a relatively slender profile, and a few extra pens don't take up much extra space. In an old camping and wilderness survival guide that I read many years ago, the author explained that as part of his kit, he would always bring along a delicate porcelain teacup with a broken handle. Why? It brought him comfort to drink tea from it. If you plan on being away from home for several months, consider the pens in this section to be that porcelain teacup. On the opposite side, I carry my water brushes in three sizes, because why not? And then here, lots and lots of ink. I used to haul my ink in these sample vials from Goulet Pens, but recently decided to upgrade to these vials because they hold a lot more ink, up to 10 milliliters, and fit better into these slots. Most of these pens, with the exception of my Opus 88 and Pen BBS 456, need to be empty during flights, so having a lot of ink to refill them is pretty important. By the way, I recently discovered a very compact way of carrying ink. These refillable cartridges from Noodlers designed to fit the Ahab and the Triple Tail. They hold quite a bit of ink, about 3 milliliters, and their slender profile and sturdiness makes them ideal for smaller pen cases. Though, because they're very thin, to fill the pens you'll need a filling contraption like this one. Another absolutely fantastic tool is this plastic ink bottle from Peniter, which not only carries a lot of ink, but also allows you to fully fill your piston and vacuum filling pens. It also has the added benefit of having one of these filling contraptions in the cap. Which means that I don't have to bring this one. A fantastic little tool. In this pocket I usually keep an eraser, since the ones on the mechanical pencils are too small to be of any use, and some lead refills. The 2mm and the 0.5mm. Then I carry some pen related items that I only take on very long trips. These two things are very useful. They come with a Pilot Parallel and are used for cleaning your pen. This little plastic bulb for flushing the pen, and this shim for clearing gunk stuck in your nib. These two things are important if you're using waterproof ink, since your pens need to be cleaned often, and if you're using your pens over soft watercolor paper, paper fibers can get stuck in your nib and can be cleaned out using this little shim. Here's another very useful item. A little plastic dropper that came with the Noodler's cartridges and can be used for refilling them. It can also be used for refilling your eyedropper pens, your Opus 88 eyedropper for instance, and it saves you from having to carry a glass eyedropper or a syringe. Also I carry a little Twisby wrench and a vial of silicone grease just in case my array of Ecos need a little bit of maintenance. So that's my case for longer trips. And of course, 
when I travel, I also take these cases along and transfer some of the contents over when I arrive, since lugging this huge thing everywhere doesn't really make sense. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my explanation of the cases I use frequently. Besides being a fun subject, it's also an important thing for artists to think about. Modern life is very hectic, with a lot of schlepping and travel cutting into our precious time in the studio. Having a well put together portable art supply kit allows you to take your studio wherever you go, greatly increasing your productivity, feeling technical improvement, and artistic growth. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll be happy to reply.